So if you've seen those beautiful images where they've got a lovely soft background, but you're struggling with your camera to actually achieve that, we're going to show you a really quick way of how to actually do that through Photoshop in our fake depth of field tutorial. So here's our beginning image, and this is where we're going to end up. So let's dive straight in. So welcome to our little iPhotography tutorial about creating a fake depth of field on a photograph. Now this can be applied to pretty much any type of image really where you've not been necessarily able to apply the depth of field uh, that you really want if you want that nice soft background and to isolate your subject. Simply all we need to do in this instance is firstly duplicate our image. So to do that we can go to layer, duplicate layer. So we've got two versions of the image here. I'm just going to bring it up onto this layer panels side by side. Now, simply all we need to do with our top version, our background layer here, is that we need to blur it out. Now, if you'll see in Photoshop, there are a number of different types of blurs. If we go to filter, down to blur, there's a whole range of different ones here. Also in the blur gallery, there's some more specific ones in there. We can get a little bit more technical, but for this tutorial, we're going to keep it really, really simple. Let's just choose a Gaussian blur. Now, it's up to you as to how much uh, blur that you actually want to apply. Now, it's got to be partly uh, related to the actual distance between your subject and your background. The further apart they are, the more the blur can be. Um, the closer they are, I think you, you want to reduce that radius um, so it doesn't seem too fake in effect. So with what we've got here, I think it does look a little bit kind of overcooked initially. So let's bring it back down a little bit. So maybe around about eight pixels. Again, your version is going to be a little bit different depending on the image that you choose. So either way, we've got our blurred version there. Now, what we need to do is basically reveal the foreground and keep the background blurred. And to do that is just a simple layer mask. So we click on our layer mask option in the bottom of the layers panel here, and we've got our mask. Now, if you've not used layer masks before, they're really, really simple, very helpful tool in terms of non-destructive editing. And what that means is that everything we're going to do from here on in is temporary. Any changes or tweaks that we make using the layer mask can be really, really quickly undone. So to operate our layer mask, we're going to need to use the brush tool. So we've got our brush tool set here and making sure our color palettes are set to black and white. Now, depending upon which color is on the foreground, which is the top one and which one's the background, um, it will denote as to whether we're actually going to be hiding any information or revealing it. Simply put, when you've got a black brush that you're using here, this is going to be hiding the information. This is going to be basically helping us to reveal our, our subject in the, on the layer underneath. And if we were using white, that's going to reveal it. But you'll see it a little bit more clearly as we go through. So we've got our brush selected. We're going to just right click and make it a little bit larger just so it's more visible. And then let's zoom in nice and close so you can actually see the depth of field occur. So I'm just using a soft edge to this brush. If it's too hard, um, it may make the effect a little bit obvious because depth of field is, again, all led by light. So it's all done kind of quite softly. And all we need to do is just on our layer mask, with that being selected, it's just a brush bit by bit. We don't need to make many long strokes, just multiple small strokes, just to gently reveal our subject. Making multiple clicks sometimes is a little bit better, I find. We need to go through this as closely and carefully as you can. Don't worry too much if you include parts of the background by accident, because this is where you can switch to using your white brush instead. So either press X on the keyboard or this little double arrow icon, and it switches to white, still using the brush tool, and we can just cover over that mistake there. So as we said, the black reveals and the white hides. So we're going to switch back to black, and we're just going to go around, and I'm just going to reveal a little bit more of our subject as we go. So, okay, as you can see, we've done a bit of a rough outline there, but there are certain areas where the background is starting to come into focus. Uh, the areas that we've, we've used the layer mask and we've brushed over that a little bit too heavily. So as I simply said, we can just change to that white brush, go back in, and make your brush a little bit smaller and just fill in that bits of information. So it will just re-blur parts of that background just to get a nice separation between fore and background. So layer masks are always about switching in between the black brush and the white brush just to make those adjustments. But as I said at the start, this is the beauty of non-destructive editing is that you can go back 
and you can quickly change. So the trick to getting the depth of field correct is just making sure all those different elements that you know would naturally be out of focus if it was shot in camera um, are so. So you see little areas in between her hair which actually see the background. So again, we're looking to making those areas out of focus as well. So it's good to just step back every now and again and have a look at the image as a whole. There we go. So we've got a little bit more of a nicer blurred background as where we did before. So if I just click on and off our preview, we can see where we were before and this is where we are now. Now it all depends upon the actual image that you're working with as to whether you feel the effect is too much in hindsight. And again, this is the beauty of non-destructive editing that using with layers, we can use our opacity layer and just reduce that opacity. So we can actually start to reveal a little bit more detail in the background, but still keep a level of separation. So it's not as harsh as our original, it's a little bit softer. So by using the opacity tool, we can do that. So this is just softening and reducing the opacity of the whole layer overall. So that's our really simple, quick tutorial of creating a fake depth of field around a subject. One little tip that's bearing in mind, though this instance on this image that we're using here, we can't actually see the model's feet or the floor uh, of where her feet are touching, but it's worth bearing in mind that if you want to make a nice convincing depth of field, it's worthwhile just revealing a bit of detail around the feet on the floor, because that's where naturally depth of field would occur, obviously on the subject, as well as on the same plane as to where they're standing. So it's a good little thing to think about. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Keep watching out for more from iPhotography. Thanks very much.